months after its last outing, the London Marathon is back. Thousands of runners, helpers and spectators from all over the world will descend on the capital. It's one of the biggest street parties of the year where three quarters of a million people are on the streets watching and they're watching 45,000 people run 26.2 miles. The crowd is so amazing. It was three and a half hours of just pure joy, encouragement, everyone supporting you. Winding its way along 26.2 miles of London's roads, starting out in Blackheath, snaking past landmarks like the Tower of London and Big Ben, before finishing in front of the palace. It's an iconic course devised by former Olympic runners John Disley and Chris Brasher. Um, my father was, uh, you know, never took no for an answer, never thought that anything was impossible. He was the pacemaker for Sir Roger Bannister when, um, when he did the first sub four minute mile. He was a very passionate man and, and uh, you know, the two of them together were a great team and, and, and now here we are sort of 42 years later um, over a million people have taken part and over one billion pounds has been raised for good causes. And, you know, the camaraderie you get from, from running an event is, is something that you're unlikely to get in life. You know, you're going to be cheered by the crowd, hundreds of thousands of people put the name on your chest, they'll be shouting your name, you'll actually probably want a name change by the end of it. And um, it's that that makes it such an amazing experience and one I hope that you will will, will enjoy on the 23rd uh, of April this year. And yes, as Hugh's hinted at there, I will be one of the 45,000 people pounding the tarmac on the 23rd. Nothing to worry about, surely. You'll get to a point in the marathon where it just, you've run so far and you've still got so far to go. This can happen at sort of 18, 19, 20 miles, something like that you need to be thinking about your nutrition, you need to be thinking about some of the mental prep, the mental side of things, and just the volume of impact going through your legs is so much more. There are sort of two key pillars of marathon work. It's the long run, and it's also threshold running, this lactate threshold running, uh, which builds your speed endurance. If you're just focusing on the long run, training becomes very obsessive about that one run that most closely mimics marathon day, but it's just one part of the week uh, and you need to be doing other things within there. And how on earth am I going to keep myself fueled for three, four, five hours, however long this marathon is going to take? It's a challenge. A lot of people will go with a, with a sports gel or a sport, like some sort of sports nutrition product. You'll need to be drinking water as well because you'll be dehydrating, you'll be sweating. Well, there's no more excuses now, but I know what I'm doing. I think it's time for me to lace up those trainers and go for a little run along the Thames. You are a runner, you are a runner, you are a runner. People have all these personal reasons to run. And, you know, if you're going to do 26.2 miles, it's a long way. So, you know, those evenings when you're training, it might be dark and having that personal reason to remember someone or raise funds for, whether it's a children's charity, a cancer charity, whatever it might be, that really spurs you on. There'll be points where you're high up, feeling great, everything's going well, and then you'll be down the bottom of a little bit of a pit and this will be, it'll all be a bit rubbish and you'll be questioning every life decision. And it's just about getting you through those moments. You can start counting to 100. Uh, you might have a mantra that you can repeat to yourself over and over again. Think about the charity that you're running for. Just come to the end of that two hour run. It's starting to rain a little bit. When I just got into running, I could barely pace myself for two minutes, let alone two hours. So. It's taken a lot of hard work to come this far, obviously, but it does go to show that anyone can do it if they really put their mind to it. But you've got to have a good reason to dedicate yourself to these months and months of marathon training, then to put yourself through what I'm going to go through on race day. We didn't think that fundraising was part of the, 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 the first year. And it turned out it was, that actually um, 
a charity there uh, had raised over a million pounds in the first year. It was a charity for blood cancer and, and raising funds to help to try and find a cure for that. So we were started in 1960 by a family called the Eastwoods who really sadly lost their daughter, Susan, to leukaemia. And back then, only one in 10 children survived leukaemia. And nowadays it's nine in 10. And that is very much thanks to research and because of the research we've been funding over the last 60 years. Blood cancers is a, is a big collection of related diseases that um, all have their origin in the bone marrow, but they, they present very differently. So some of those cancers have very good outcomes, um, thankfully, but many of them unfortunately have very poor outcomes. So the main signs and symptoms are fatigue, looking pale, bruising is a common one, um, lumps, uh, all that sort of stuff. So if there's anything that you don't think is quite normal, make sure you go to your GP and get, get, get it checked. Now my connection to blood cancer is very personal. You never think about these kind of things when you're 10 years old, but one day you're fine and the next, bam, you're not. I was diagnosed with Burkitt lymphoma, a fast growing blood cancer with around 200 cases per year in the UK. And whilst blood cancer might seem distant to some of you right now, uh, one in 19 of us will have the disease in our lifetimes. What I find really interesting about this disease is that it's completely indiscriminate. It can affect tiny, tiny babies from there anywhere up to the elderly. Um, and it's a horrible disease. So for some blood cancers, we've got an excellent survival rate now. So as I said, childhood leukemia, nine and 10, but there are some really fast growing leukemias in adults that still have a really poor survival rate of about 20%. And it's for those people, we really need to do something about it. We need to find kind of treatments. We need to be able to figure out how we can di diagnose the disease earlier. Um, one of the big problems we have for a lot of blood cancer patients is that um, the, those patients um, tend to have lots of other uh, morbidities. So they have other conditions that affect how much chemotherapy and treatment that we can give those patients. So that really does limit uh, what we can do. So we, we're constantly looking for better ways to treat blood cancers that have fewer side effects, but are just as effective at treating the cancer. Some versions of genes, unfortunately, predispose to uh, individuals getting a cancer more than other versions of those genes. So we're looking to identify, firstly, which genes contribute to cancer risk, and then which versions of those genes actually um, associate with risk. The London Marathon is an amazing event for us, and it's one of our biggest kind of fundraising events in our calendar. So we have around a um, hundred really dedicated individuals running for us um, every year. Together, they raise around two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, a quarter of a million pounds, which is which is huge. I ran it last year in uh, twenty twenty two in October, and it was absolutely fabulous. So I had a little bit of a midlife crisis in that I found myself a little bit overweight. I used to run at school and so I thought well I'll, I'll just you know try that again see how I got on with it and uh, admittedly the first year was um, painful shall we say uh, but once I started to, to get some fitness and the weight started to drop off um, I found myself getting progressively faster and faster and better and better and enjoying the running a lot more. Enjoying the running yeah, I think I can get behind that, Jim. I spoke to someone else who's enjoying the running recently. Towie star and TV personality Mark Wright, who tackled the marathon last October and is doing it all over again with his mum, dad and brother Josh. We're going to go all the way to a, London, a marathon. You know, my mum, my dad, Josh and me, all different levels of fitness. Um, and they're saying to them, if we can do this, you can at least do this something, you know, a bit less, but just getting out there and trying to convince people to switch up their lifestyles again. If I can do it, anyone out there you know, can do it as long as they're capable of like walking. Right? When we started training, like my husband, he was like walking two miles and his back was killing him. He'd have to sit down and think, but now he's up to like eight, nine miles and he's not complaining 12, about his back. Right. So 12, you have to Put it this way, there's no limits in life. You can, if you want to do something, you put your head to it and you focus and train, you can do it. I think that's what people prove when they do things like this. To April 23rd, it's fast approaching. What are your top tips for race day? Make sure you fuel properly in the marathon. So, um, us humans, we don't have enough glycogen in our bodies to run 26 miles, unless you're a pro runner, which of course, very few of us are. So most of us have enough glycogen to run 18 to 20 miles. 
So that's that's why we have a what's called the wall. Make sure you're allowing the crowd to influence you and to soak up the atmosphere, to soak up those people cheering your name. Uh, it just it can it pushes you on further than you realise. Print your name on your uh, t-shirt or the vest, whatever you're wearing. Honestly, I swear you will want that name. Barbat Mile 21, you will be sick of hearing your name. That's the one piece piece of advice. It's, you know, you will feel like an Olympic athlete. You will feel like Andy Murray on the centre court at Wimbledon or Harry Kane at Wembley, that people, total strangers, are cheering with just this sea of positivity every step of the way. The reward, Paul, is off scale. You will absolutely love it.